Governments around the world are getting a bit more worried about holding treasuries. They're getting worried about holding the dollar. If there's a problem, for example, there's a crisis with the currency or a worry about the debt market or if there's some uh, action by the United States to stop people doing what they want with their treasuries or with their dollar balances, those who have the gold will still be calling the shots. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for April 15th through April 22nd, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature backdated one ounce silver kangaroos at $3.19 over spot. We also have 2024 quarter ounce gold eagles at $69 over melt. And finally, we're offering 90% constitutional silver at just $2.75 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And back with us today is Clive Thompson, retired managing director of wealth management, formerly working in Swiss private banking. Clive, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hello, Elijah, and thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, it's a great honor that you want me back a second time. It's great to have you on again, and we really appreciate your insights. We first learned about you through our good friend, uh, mutual friend, Mario Ineco, and we just, our viewers loved our last interview, so we really wanted to have you back on here. Um, one of the topics I did like want to discuss right now is really since we've had you on, um, gold has just been shooting higher, and I know there's a lot of uh, purchasing coming from Asia. Your perspective on why gold has just been shooting higher recently? I'll get to the answer in a second, but I think it's puzzling a lot of people because we're seeing higher interest rates, which traditionally should be the enemy of the gold price. Um, you know, interest rates have come from nearly zero to currently around 5%. I know that uh, up until a week ago, there was a forecast that they might come down. Uh, that's kind of going out of the window a little bit now. Um, but it is rather unusual to see gold, the gold price rising in the face of much higher interest rates, although there is some precedent for that. Um, but let's look at the reason why the gold price is, is rising. Now, it's not Western buyers. And I know that because I look at the ETF uh, sales, the gold ETF sales in the West. Uh, the figures are all on the uh, World Gold Council website for ETFs from all around the world. So here in the West, in America and in Europe, private investors have been selling their gold ETFs and cashing it in, which means the ETFs have to sell the gold as people sell the shares. Uh, so the net gold inside the gold ETFs in the West has shrunk significantly. Uh, meanwhile, in the Asian ETFs, the amount of gold in those ETFs has been rising, although not quite so, so much, not enough to cancel out what's coming out of the ETFs in the West. Now, why, why is gold coming out of the uh, ETFs in the West? Well, people are looking at the gold price and saying, it's done nothing for 10 years. I've been sitting on a dormant asset. And look, there's so many exciting things going on in the stock market. There's NVIDIA going to the moon. There's Bitcoin going to the moon. There's the MAG7. Uh, I can even buy the S&P, which is basically NVIDIA anyway. Uh, I can buy the S&P and make a ton of money. And gold's not just, just not doing it for me. So people are, have been selling their gold, looking for something a little bit more exciting. But out in Asia... The, the trend is different. There's two things going on in Asia. First of all, we've got the central banks and, and mainly China buying gold. They bought more gold this year, last year rather, in 2023 than they've ever bought before. And they are very strong buyers in the first quarter of this year. And globally, the gold buying from central banks generally was the second highest in all of history. So strong interest by central banks to buy gold. Why is that happening? It's because the US dollar is a worry for them. And the reason it's a worry for them is because of the rising level of debt in the United States, that's government debt. So the US government is spending rather more than it takes it in taxes. Uh, it's not taken any action to control that, to rein it in. The, the uh, difference is getting wider and a new problem is emerging. And that is of the interest payments on that debt. Because interest rates have risen substantially. When bonds which were issued over the last decade are maturing, and those bonds would have been issued 
five, 10 years ago when interest rates were close to zero. So they would have been paying one, two, three percent. So as these bonds mature, the government has to refinance its debt at the current interest rates. So on the 10 year, for example, four and a half percent. If they're borrowing short term in the treasury bill market, which is one of the things they're doing, they're refinancing themselves at over five percent. So the interest on the US government debt is starting to become a problem. It's literally, the interest expense has literally doubled over the last 12 months due to the higher interest rates. And it looks like that trend is going to continue. And it's consuming a greater percentage of the government's tax take. So the government's tax take is of the order of uh, four uh, trillion US dollars. The expenditure is of the order of six trillion dollars. And the interest expense is approaching. It's about seven hundred trillion now, but it's 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 on its way to a trillion dollars. So that would be a quarter of the tax take. Within the next ten years, it's highly likely that unless some action is taken to rein in spending or raise taxes, it is highly likely that the interest expense on the national debt, on the government's debt, will exceed the total of their tax incoming receipts which you can appreciate is a bit of a problem if you had if it was an individual with a credit card. And I know the government's not the credit card, but not an individual. Uh, so things are different. But if it was an individual with a credit card and your interest outgoings on your credit card debt was exceeding your salary, that's kind of where we're heading at the moment. So governments around the world are getting a bit more worried about holding treasuries. They're getting worried about holding the dollar. And we've seen net divestment of US treasuries. And uh, on the other side of the coin, a net increase in gold buying. And uh, that figure, that buy, that amount of gold buying seems to be going on. And the reason it's going on is because if there's a problem, for example, there's a crisis with the currency or a worry about the debt market, or if there's some uh, action by the United States to stop people doing what they want with their treasuries or with their dollar balances, uh, you'll, th- those who have the gold will still be calling the shots. And those who have the, whoever has the most gold will be sitting at the table if they have a new Bretton Woods type agreement to bring in a new world monetary system. Um, I think that's something which is on the cards in the next decade at some point in a crisis. Uh, so it makes sense for central banks to buy gold. But that I don't think is the major driver of the gold price. I think it's an important factor. I think there's something even more important going on, and that is more or less the same thing, and it's China, but now we're talking about the middle class in China. And don't forget, the Chinese population is a very large population. It's 1.3 billion people. You know, it's far larger than the population of the United States many times over. Up until now, the middle class have been saving in the form of apartments. That was the traditional way of saving in China. Uh, If you're middle class, you had surplus income, you go to the bank, borrow a bit more money, buy an apartment, rent it out, and then you buy a second apartment, rent it out, and eventually you buy five apartments or more and rent them out. That was the way they saved. And, you know, from a normal investing perspective, buying apartments doesn't seem such a bad idea. But the the problem which has arisen um, is there's a massive oversupply of property in China. Millions of these apartments, houses are sitting empty. Real estate companies are going bankrupt. Lots and lots of them are going bankrupt. And there are all across China, millions of half finished, partially finished blocks of flats and houses and apartments. And people who have paid for these things as a form of saving are now facing the situation that they've got an unfinished apartment, which they can't therefore rent out and they can't finish it either because they may not have the money or maybe the company which is uh, employed to do it is the only one who can do it. So owning or saving money via apartments has gone out the window. So people are not doing that in China. Uh, so you might think they'd turn to the stock market. But the as you know, the stock market in China is it's the worst performing stock market last year and this year. So is the Hong Kong stock market. So The reason for that is the generally perceived anti-business policies coming out of the central administration. Uh, So if you're the average guy in China, uh, and the Chinese stock market wasn't such a big thing in China as it is in America, but if you're the average guy in China, you're really thinking, I don't want to put my money into the stock market. It's speculative. It's going down everything. Every day, everything, every share anyone ever bought who I know bought a share, it's lower than they paid for it. It's not a good place to park money. So where are they going? 
the vast majority of people are going to the jewelry shops in China. And there's tens of thousands of jewelry shops all across China. And in China, uh, the jewelry shops are much more bullion like than they are here. In other words, you when you buy gold, you know exactly what weight you're getting and exactly what you're paying per gram of gold. And you know what you could sell it back to the jewelry shop for. Uh, the prices are all displayed so you can understand how, how the system works. So you're, whilst you're buying a, a gold ornament or a gold bar or a gold coin or a gold bangle or a bit of jewelry, you know what it weighs in pure gold. And you know what the shop will buy it back from you for if you want to do the maths. And you know what you're paying per gram because it's displayed on the wall. Uh, you also know you have to pay a labor charge, which is displayed next to each item. You don't get that back if you sell your gold. So uh, owning gold through gold jewelry is something which is going on in China. And I know that's going on because I've checked into the annual and half yearly and quarterly reports of uh, a number of large jewelry chains in China. And typically the sales are rising by about 60% a year. Uh, here I'm looking at the last quarter ended December or the last half year, maybe ended in September. But th those numbers are telling me that jewelry sales, particularly gold, are significantly on the rise in China. And that's not the only way people can buy gold in China. There's also an application called WeChat, which everybody's got. It's kind of your social media app. It's your, uh, your, your the way you pay for everything. Um, it, they also are social scoring you through that app. <laughs> so, but at the end of the day, you can buy one gram through WeChat of gold, which well, you buy any amount of gold, but a minimum is one gram. That's about 80 US dollars. Uh, so people can easily access the gold market that way, even for very small amounts. And those who have got a little bit more money, and there's about 10 or 11 million people doing this, could go to the Shanghai Gold Exchange, where you can register and buy gold ingots, uh, the most popular being the 100 gram 99.99% bar. Um, and as I said, there's ten about 10 or 11 million people who have registered for that service. Uh, obviously, you can buy the same thing via your bank who buys on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Um, so that gold is trading at quite a premium to the Western gold. Typically, it was $20, $30 uh, premium to the gold uh, quoted in New York. Uh, a couple of days ago, I saw it spike up to $90 premium. Uh, I checked this morning, it was $50 or $60 premium. So it's clear that there's more demand in Asia for gold, uh, and it's enough to keep gold uh, at the moment at a, at a premium relative to the Western price. So gold is literally flowing out of the West, ETFs and others, and flowing into the East. Now, when it comes to, you said, you know, the people that, or the countries that have the gold have the power. We talked about on our last interview that the U.S., at least if they still have the gold they say they do, have the most gold. So how do you see this playing out? Because the narrative seems to be that there's a lot of de-dollarization going on and that the BRICS are rising in power are going to have a gold-backed currency. But unless they accumulate more gold, it seems like the world will still be U.S. dominant. Correct. So the, the United States has got by far the most gold in the world. Um China is trying to catch up rapidly. Uh, of course, there are, are other countries which have got a lot of gold, including Switzerland, Germany, and Italy. Um, so, but but the United States outshines them all in terms of the amount of gold. Mm -hmm. But I think the the plan from China, in particular, uh, is to keep acquiring gold so that at least it has, uh, if there is a new monetary system, it has a say. But th there is another aspect to that, and you mentioned the BRICS currency. Um, the BRICS currency doesn't exist yet. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it for a long time, and I think it's still a long time in coming. Uh, but the recent discussions that I've kind of picked up here and there is that it would be a, a mixture of gold and commodity backed. Some people say gold and Bitcoin backed. Well, I, I'm skeptical about that, but you never know. Um, but nothing definitive has been formulated yet. Uh, but it does seem that perhaps uh, a combination of gold and something else, maybe local currency, maybe gold and renminbi or gold and Brazilian rail. I mean, I don't know exactly how they'd work it. Uh, but the, the, the plan 
is to try and build some sort of system which is outside of the SWIFT system so that countries can trade between themselves with some sort of commodity, and that looks like it would be a gold-backed currency, a BRICS currency, uh, which would not be subject to sanctions by the United States. Uh, oh, one of the problems is that the USA has recently well, it, it has weaponized the dollar to some extent with its sanctions. And I don't think Janet Yellen helped things very much when she went to one of Russia's allies in uh, down, down in Brazil and started talking about stealing Russia's assets to pay uh, to uh, finance Ukraine. Um, it, it is, I think it's one thing to freeze somebody's assets. It's another thing to steal them. You know, it's like a like a parent. You know, you can or a school they can confiscate the child's iPhone, but you've got to give it back at the end of the day. But you can't say, "And now the iPhone's mine." It is a world of difference, and I, I don't think uh, that those words that they might take Russia's assets and use them for some other purpose uh, are going down very well anywhere in the world. So, you know, there, there is a interest globally for people to de-dollarize themselves and have more of other things which can't be so easily frozen or sanctioned. Um, and I think that, again, plays into the gold as uh, uh, one of the reasons why the gold is starting to rise. But I, I really think we're at the beginning of a rise. I think the the ultimate end for the gold price will probably be close to it. Well, it will be infinity because at the end of the day, the dollar, uh, I, I don't want to give a time scale on this, Whilst the dollar will continue to exist, it won't be the dollars you've got in your pocket today, which will become effectively unspendable at some point. You mentioned the demand we're seeing not only from the from China and a lot of these other uh, BRICS nations accumulating gold, but also from the population in China. And it seems like there's a cultural aspect to that as well, that gold is seen as money, right? And we're seeing, did you say a 60% uh, increase in demand, it seems like, every year for the uh, jewelry stores there that you mentioned are more like bullion stores. I, I was re really talking the late, latest figures. The la if you look at the accounts of uh, jewelry companies, um, let's take, uh, I'll give you one, for example, Luckfook, which you can look up. Uh, I haven't got the others in my head. Um, look up the latest results. You'll see that sales are up very, very significantly at the last reported date. So, to some extent, that might be COVID related because we, you know, that maybe people weren't going to the shops as much a year ago. But bottom line is the numbers of gold sales are extremely good. Now, what about silver then? Because it's interesting over the last few months, as we've seen gold rise, uh, silver was underperforming. And now just in the last couple of weeks, I believe it switched to overperforming uh, this year or pretty close to the same um uh, same performance as gold. So what kind of demand are we seeing for silver and why is it catching up so quickly? So the the production of silver, the mine silver, has been dropping over the last decade. The I think there's two reasons for that. One, the silver price hasn't done very well. Um, it's a lot lower than it was 10 years ago, but that's not really the factor. The real point is that silver is mined as a byproduct to a large extent of other metal mining. So it's not dependent on the price at all. Um, so we've had mining, mine production dropping a bit over the last decade. We have also seen rising industrial demand. And by industrial demand, I'm talking about the photo, uh, photovoltaic, the electric, electrical industry, the auto industry, um, and of course, the manufacture of uh, collector bars and coins, the sort of things that uh, where, where silver gets used. So the demand from those sources has been increasing, and it's now greater was last, I'm talking 2022, and we haven't, haven't seen the 2023 figures, they may not be out yet, but it's now greater than the supply. So the difference has been coming from recycled silver. That's why going back over the last year or so, we have seen a rise in, in the silver price, and that sucked out more recycled silver. But clearly the, uh, the price has to go higher to suck out more recycled silver because the demand for silver continues to rise globally, whilst the supply is pretty static 
completely static. It's, it's, it is forecast to rise slightly in the current year um, by the World Gold Council, but I don't think that's going to compensate for the rise in demand. So the difference has to come from silver recycling. And to get silver to be recycled, you have to have a higher and higher prices because at the first price rise, Granny takes her silver forks and spoons down to the pawn shop and sells them. But uh, if you have another price rise, she then hunts in the, in the attic to see if she's got any more. So each price rise will bring out some more. But once you've sold it back into the system, it, once you've recycled it once, you can't recycle it twice unless it gets re rehashed into uh, coins or bars or candlesticks or whatever people make into, in silver, and then they bring them back later on. But it's it's certainly true that higher prices will bring out recycled silver. So I think there's a kind of break on the rise in the silver price. Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, the shorts uh, in the silver market uh, and whether they're getting squeezed. I think to some extent they have been squeezed in recent weeks. Um, but uh, I, uh, I'm always quite wary of people who say it's the shorts who've been putting a lid on the prices. I, I, I don't really believe that. I mean, Anyone who goes short of a product knows that if the price rises, you can really get screwed over in in terms of money. Now that did happen a year ago in the uh, in the nickel market, as we saw, where there was one particular short, um, a major major short, uh, who couldn't deliver on the nickel that he'd sold short, and then of course the nickel price went up to five or six or seven or ten times the price it was, and finally they closed the market and uh, uh, effectively told everybody that the, the nickel they bought they weren't going to get it and they were going to re re redo the system. And now the I think the London Metal Exchange is being sued for that, but I, I don't think we I, I doubt very much we, whether we have that that level of short in the in the silver market because the nickel one was a, a, a situation where there's an individual or an individual company which was short a massive amount. In the silver market, there must be multiple players. And as the silver price rises, they'll be covering their shorts and, and taking care of things to make sure they don't suffer too much losses. But yes, the reason the silver price is rising is demand is starting to exceed supply. Um, I think that's a, a, a demand situation, partly the auto industry. I, to some extent, it'd be savers. People people like to save silver coins. So perhaps before they start buying gold, they're buying silver. Uh, I haven't really heard much from the silver dealers if the uh, demand coming through the front door to buy coins and so forth is increasing. Uh, but I can tell you uh, from a personal perspective, I don't think the current price is enough to put me off to buy from buying silver. In fact, I was in the pawn shop yesterday. Uh, that's P-A-W-N. Uh, just uh, in case someone misheard me. I was in the pawn shop yesterday and I was buying, I, I bought myself 25 silver coins, um, some very nice ones that uh, had been brought in by uh, a, a widow. Her husband had died. He'd been a coin collector. And uh, she'd already sold some to the coin shop, but she kept behind this particular collection because it was very special to her. And it was a collection of uh, 15 Swiss one-ounce coins with every, uh, all the major railway stations in Switzerland on them. So they were kind of commemorative coins of, uh, I should say, tokens, because I don't think they've got a, 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 stop, a value, but uh, one-ounce coins, written one ounce, and then the picture of the railway station on, on one side. And because they were so beautiful, she'd kept them behind, but now she needed the money. So she'd taken them into the pawn shop and sold them to the pawn shop. And he... He gave me a ring because he knows I'm in the market for that sort of thing. And I went in and uh, took them off him. I paid a bit more than the silver price, um, but probably quite a lot more than the silver price. But I'm not unhappy with the silver price where it is because I think we still could go a lot higher. Do you anticipate uh, the silver or gold then outperforming in the coming months? You know, it's a difficult one to call. I, I like to own and buy both. I think they're both going to go a lot higher as the distrust in currencies increases. Um, I, I, there's also a, a sort of side factor that the generalized surveillance of what you do with money will be increasing. Um, and a lot of people don't like that, even though they're not doing anything wrong. They just don't like the fact that someone's looking over their shoulder. So, you know, while you're quite happy uh, using your credit card to go do your shopping and 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 so on. There will always be situations and circumstances where people want to pay cash, um, and that option might be going away. And, and you never know when you might need to pay somebody something. And perhaps uh, if you don't want to use your bank account or your credit card, um, 
people like to think that I know gold and silver isn't used as cash today, but they, they might like to think they'd like to have a means to do that. Um, so to illustrate that, you can imagine there, there are people who want to slip a $50 note, I don't know if they exist in America, a $100 note into the present for their grandchild. Uh, you know, so you send them a birthday card with a hundred dollar note. Well, maybe you won't be able to do that, do that in the future. Maybe you'll have to slip in a silver coin. Uh, what about the housewife who's got an abusive husband who controls everything? Uh, well, she won't want to. She won't be able to squirrel away a bit of getaway money, getaway money, runaway money uh, on her wallet if it's um, surveyed. And if there's no, and if you can't put away cash or spend cash, then again, maybe. Uh, she's going to be looking for some other solution. Gold and silver could come in there. Uh, what about when you have the man who shows up at the door offering to cut your grass? Uh, well, he's not going to be taking your credit card. He wants cash, cash in hand. And we could go on and on and on thinking of circumstances where you want to spend some money and you don't want to use electronic means of payment. Uh, and I'm talking about perfectly legal reasons. I'm putting to one side the illegal reasons, which we all know do exist as well. Um, so uh, I, I think there's going to be, uh, as the ability to use cash reduces over time, and I think it will reduce over time because that's the plan of most governments to gradually replace cash with what they call the central bank digital currency, the CBDC. That could be some years in coming, but that's their plan. So as this comes into existence, I think the usage of cash will decline uh, to the point where you can't actually spend your cash anymore, or more likely at some point due to a crisis, they make it mandatory to use your CBDC wallet at your bank or your CBDC wallet on your phone for every transaction you do for tax and money, anti-money laundering reasons. And that, of course, will mean that you don't have any option but to use electronic means of payment and therefore secret means of payment, which you might want to have for personal reasons, won't, won't exist anymore. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for April 15th through April 22nd, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature backdated one ounce silver kangaroos at $3.19 over spot. We also have 2024 quarter ounce gold eagles at $69 over melt. And finally, we're offering 90% constitutional silver at just $2.75 over spot. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you.